Good morning, Panthers. I'm Ray John Edmond. Welcome to the morning announcements. Today is Tuesday, April 6th. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for our Panther Pledge. This pledge helps us remember to be safe, be respectful, and be an avid learner. As a seminal Charles Panther, I will conduct myself at all times and in all places with honor and respect for myself, my classmates, my teachers, my school, and my community. Today's lunch menu. Today's lunch menu is mini twin cheeseburgers, soy butter sandwich platter, PB&J grape sandwich platter, corn and bean salsa, assorted milk, and assorted fruit selections. Now here's Zoe for the weather. Good morning, Panthers. I'm Zoe Cummings. Welcome to the morning announcements. Today's high is 80 degrees. It is currently 60 degrees, a low of 62, with a 1% chance of rain. Tomorrow's high is 82 degrees, low of 63 degrees, with a 3% chance of rain. This week is Days of Remembrance of the Victims of the Holocaust. Please stay tuned for a short interview with Alan Small, a Holocaust survivor, on one of his experiences as a Holocaust survivor. Tomorrow, fourth and fifth grade begin their FSA testing. Students, please remember to go to bed early and eat a good breakfast to start your day. Remember to take your time and try your best. I'm Zoe Cummings, signing off. Remember, Panthers, roar. We are ready for learning. We take ownership of our own work. We have a positive attitude, and we are respectful to our teachers, classmates, and staff. In 1942, we got up, and the entire area, the segregated area where the Jews live, was surrounded by Lithuanian uh, collaborators by German SS men and the Polish police. And they kept us in the houses from May 8 until May 12th. And whoever went out to go to the outhouse was shot immediately. And we were sitting in the house for four days without food, without water. And like I said, not even walk outside of the house. May 12th, we, uh, they woke everybody up about five, six o'clock in the morning, and they started yelling, Ali Juden Rouse, it means all the Jews out of the, uh, uh, the houses. And as they started sh uh, shouting and, get, and screaming and yelling, and whoever didn't come up uh, fast enough, they used to hit him with the rifles. With, it's beyond, it's almost impossible for me to describe that time. And as my family started walking out of the house, and of course, I expected to go with my mother and my sisters, my grandmother and my mother insisted that you're not going over with us. You're going to hide in the attic. And I started crying, holding onto my mother's sleeve. And I said, no, I'm not going to. And I want to go with you. She says, no, you're going to hide. And if you survive, just make sure that you tell what happened. And I'll always watch over you. That was all last words, my mother's. And I listened to her and I jumped up on the stove and from the stove I got into the uh, attic and I was in the attic there for quite a long time. And I didn't know, started worrying, what am I gonna do if I survive? Where will I go, you know? And, uh, and all of a sudden I heard machine gun fire and uh, also screaming and yelling in the streets. It was a pandemonium or whatever you call it. I just couldn't believe it and I'm sitting there and then I was curious enough that we had two little windows in the attic and I tried to look if I can see anything. And they spread a big blanket and they told all the Jewish people to 
empty their pockets and all the valuables, you know, and all that. And they used to uh, make everybody to undress in the nude. They uh, were shooting them. Some of them were killed immediately, but a lot of them were wounded and alive, you know, and was going on. And about, I would say around 12 o'clock, I hear a lot of noise in my house from there while I was in the attic. And I didn't know, I hear crying and screaming. And I still started to think, should I jump out of the attic or not? So I decided I jumped out of the attic. In one house, there were three families or four families. So we had more people over there by that time in my house. And when I jumped out of the attic, I said, screaming and crying, carry on. They didn't even notice me. The people in the house that, uh, that I jumped out from the attic. And the first thing, uh, when I jumped out, I ran into the bathroom the one, the room that we had in the house where my parents used to sleep there. And I see my oldest sister with a baby. She's sitting and pulling her hair, my oldest sister, and screaming and crying, and the baby is in a creep crying. And when I walked into the room, she didn't even know who I am, my sister. She was in a daze, you know, and screaming and crying and pulling her hair. That's how I remember. So I started shaking her, and her name was Matilda Matla. And I said, what happened? Tell me what happened. And she says to me, everybody's dead. And that day they killed uh, 20, over 2,500 men, women, and children. 